Dear friends, this is Prithviraj from Bangalore connecting with you once again through this short message on holiness of God. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us, so said A. W. Tozer. Our view of God is important as it affects our decisions that direct our life. We do not have enough wisdom and knowledge to understand the holiness of God, but we can have some understanding when we see the revelations He has provided in the Word of God. Exodus 15.11 says, Who is like you, O Lord, majesty in holiness, awesome in glory, working on this? Isaiah 6.3 and Revelation 4.8 provides glimpse of God being praised by heavenly beings as holy, holy, holy. No other attribute of God is mentioned three times and this emphasizes the significance of this attribute. Originating in God's nature, holiness is a unique quality of His character. Holiness when referred to God imply his unblemished character that cannot be charged with any wrong. When we think of God's holiness, we think of his separation from sin. He is utterly unique, incomparable and matchless without any parallels. God is separate, set above all which is created yet. He calls us to an ethical purity. Things associated with Him are holy. Holiness is one of the essential natures that God required of His people. The word holy when referred to humanity denotes that which is sanctified or set apart for divine service. We are members of the universal body of Christ, purchased by the blood of Christ, set apart for God as holy and spotless. In 1 Peter 1.15, we are advised to be holy in all our conduct as he who called us is holy. 2 Corinthians 7.1 says, Let us cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Hebrew 12.14 reminds us that we have to pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. In Matthew 5.8, we read Jesus teaching that purity in heart is essential to see God. In Matthew 5.20, we read Jesus Christ insisting that his followers must have higher quality of righteousness. Holiness is not an option but an obligation to every follower of Christ. Those who claim as spiritual and godly but walking in carnal and worldly ways are simply deceiving themselves. Romans 12 want to suggest that we would be able to live a holy life unto God by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice and by not being conformed to the pattern of this world. Charles Spurgeon observed that grace that does not make a man better than others is a worthless counterfeit. Christ saves his people not in their sins but from their sins. By faith, we are justified from the penalty of sins and we are being sanctified. We need to grow in holiness day by day, fighting lust of the flesh and attractions of the world. Personal prayer, regular feeding on His word, fellowship with followers of Christ, following the life burden of Lord Jesus, keeping thoughts and motives under control, etc., would enable us to grow in holiness. Let us decide and make consistent efforts to make ourselves 
to present holy before god thank you for listening god bless you